Hello, and welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Ranch, and today I will be giving you the picks for a couple of the main card fights in UFC 264, Poirier vs. McGregor 3. Okay, if you uh, check back in my archive videos, I did cover every fight up to this point. In my in the past couple, mostly last week, I did. Uh, I think I did a show this week. What is today? Third Wednesday. I did a show uh, Monday. So be sure to go back and check those for the prelim picks for this card. And I have that everybody's picking Sean O'Malley pick too. That's main card curtain opener. But I'm gonna do the other two main card events, and then. Um, Tomorrow I will cover the main event and co-main event. So be sure to tune in for that as well. So let's get right into this because, because I'm only covering two fights, I did a lot of research. I, I've got a ton of cappers, a full page full of cappers. So I got a lot of black ink to throw up here. So I'm gonna be covering all this shit right up. My, uh, Family has a bought a season pass to a enchanted forest water safari where the fun never stops. Bum bum. So they're gonna be going to the water park every Wednesday. So my daughter is not here to assist me with any of this, but she's just uh, you know that's that's more of a little cameo plug, I guess. She comes in. I don't know. I don't know how to what to say about that, but. Some people are saying, oh, your show is so much better when you when you have your daughter on it. Well, you know what? She's not part of this show. She's just my daughter. She just happens to throw her, you know, come in and doodle sometimes. But anyway, she's at the water park. Like, they're going to be going every Wednesday, I suppose. So, anyway, we're going to get right into this. Starting with the female bantamweight fight between Irene Aldana, Irene... I don't know, I call her Irene because that's Robles. That's her nickname, Robles. Irene Robles Aldana. She's taking on Yana Kunitskaya, the Russian that's uh, she's married to Tiago Santos Mojera. Right? Is that his nickname? Anyway, um, yeah, they're, uh, and she trains out of uh, ATT down there with a stable full of. Great female fighters. Irene Aldana trains out of the Lobo Gym in Mexico. Also, uh, good female fight. Alexa Grasso is down there. Just saying, just off the top of my head. Anyway, let's start with uh, this. These odds did change. I wrote this. I was going to do the show last night, but we, I went to. I went out with the fam, and uh, these odds. Did change a little bit. Aldana was a one minus 116 favorite. Kunitskaya was minus 104, but still the underdog. Now Kunitskaya is plus money. She's at a plus 107. Aldana went a little bit the wrong way. If you're betting her, you should have did it the other day, because now she is a minus 127. According to the odds on Bet Online, as of just now, I did, I just rewrote the um, odds on this fight. Yep, double checking, yes. So, okay, let's, let's start out discussing the favorite. Irene Aldana, like I said, the Mexican is fighting at a Lobo gym. What did I do with the cap to this marker? Just lost. Oh, there it is. Lobo Gym in Mexico, in Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, she comes off a loss against Holly Holm, who, even though Holly Holm is like 40, she's still a phenomenal female fighter. It was a unanimous decision loss. Uh, before that, she has a knockout win over Ketlin Vieira. Okay, she has a three inch height advantage over Yana Kunitskaya, uh, Foxy, Foxy Yana, and they have the same reach. 
Now, Foxy Kunitskaya also beat Ketlin Vieira via unanimous decision. I had money on her, and she did. She won a lot of people saying that was a robbery because uh, Ketlin Vieira, I will admit, controlled that fight grappling wise. However, the punches, the, co the judges must have looked at the strike differential. Yana l landed like 100 and Ketlin landed like 15 or something, something ridiculous like that. And I think that's what led them to pick Yana because I mean, they, they must not understand the whole top control of wrestling, BJJ. It's, but anyway, regardless, I cashed in on that, thankfully, but I will admit when I scored the, the fight, I scored it for Ketlin Vieira in there. There was no worry about that in the Irene Aldana fight because she knocked out Ketlin Vieira in round one. So if you want to do the MMA math, there you have it. But uh, Aldana is 12 and six as a pro, you know, minus 127 favorite. Kunitskaya 14 and five, a plus, a slight underdog at plus 107. Um, before that uh, win against Katlin Vieira, she does have a unanimous decision win against Julia Stoliarenko, who is also like the, who is she, the uh, armbar queen, right? That was, that's her thing, the armbar. But anyway, uh, she didn't work against Foxiana. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, Irene Aldana has an 84% takedown defense, but Yana Kuninskaya doesn't really go for takedown. She's more of a, a kicker striker, and she does have a better strike differential than Aldana. I didn't write it down, write down the stats, but I did write notes. Better strike differential for Foxy Yana. Okay, and she's training out of American Top Team with like uh, Amanda Nunes, Joanna and Jacek, Tisha Torres, Mara Borello, Amanda Hebas. Shit, do I have to go on? Shit, there's a ton of them. Um, so let's just get into what the cappers have to say. Cause I mean, like I said, I got a ton of cappers because there's only two fights and I, you know, I just kept writing them down as I watched their videos. So let's go with starting. I'm gonna go back and forth, back and forth. This gets right down to the wire kind of though with the capper picks. So taking Aldana, we've got Burt MMA. And then jump over here. We've got SE UFC predictions. SE UFC pred. No, I just, yeah, whatever. He's saying by Unanimous decision, which female fight, that's almost a given, am I right? Um, Layton from UFC Gambling Addicts is taking Aldana. He likes the striking of Aldana, even though Kunitskaya has a better strike differential. I forgot the exact numbers, like I, I said, I didn't write them down. Uh, MMA Fortune Teller on the side of Foxy, Ghana Kunitskaya. Uh, Tiger Bomb, both of them. This is the deal with Tiger Bomb. Johnny is saying by decision, and Jose is staying away, but he does think the fight will go the distance. Safe play there. So we're just gonna say Tiger Bomb by decision. And John, uh, Jose didn't necessarily say Aldana. I think he said pass. His, he said his bet is the fight goes the distance, so. We're just gonna say Tiger Bomb decision, all right? Um, we've got Triple P certification from the Perfect Parlay Pursuit. Uh, Alex, Dan, and Luke, all of them, Triple P certified for Foxy Yana Kunitskaya. Then we've got uh, MMA Guru. Uh, MMA Guru is taken Aldana by decision. Then we've got uh, both the Allen brothers from Fight Night Picks, Matt and Craig Allen, both taking Yana. 
Ronnie's MMA breakdowns. Like I said, look, dude, this, these are, this is tight. By decision for Ronnie, Ronnie's MMA breakdowns. We got um, Brady from DFS by the numbers. He's, he's taken Yana Kunitskaya. I love saying that name. By decision. Oh, man, I love this because you know what? When she beat uh, Ketlin Vieira, I was talking so much shit on UFC Celebrities and Classics to everybody in that chat during that fight was all over Ketlin Vieira. And they're like, oh, Ketlin Vieira's got her, the grappling, the Pre, the uh, you know the time and and I I was I was like yeah you guys are probably right but then when the, when the decision came I was like ha screw you guys I got that it was just like a big uh, pissing contest thing between me and because Dave BC Dave <laughs> but anyway um uh, back to this we got uh, it's your boy eBay's taking the Mexican in. Irene Aldana, Irene. There's no accent by the E though, so I don't know why people say, some of these cabs are saying, call it Irene, Irene. Just say Irene. I think it's Irene. There's no accent by the E, like, uh, <laughs> you know? Just nothing. Okay. Um, prediction Guru. That's the one from the United States, not to be messed with. Mixed up with MMA Guru from the UK. Pred Guru is saying uh, Konitskaya by decision. Then we've got, um, where was I? Oh, Dev the Dude, the new guy, introduced this week on my show. Dev the Dude. There you go, fam. Also taking. The Mexican by decision. Then we've got uh, Pub Sports Radio. That was Clint on uh, Clint's show. He had uh, actually Clint. Clint is actually taking Aldana. I'm sorry. He's leaning Aldana. He's going there. Clint. But his guest on the show, Dan from Best Fight Picks. I think his name is Dan Levy or Dan Levi. Dan, Dan the man, he's saying Kunitskaya by decision. And he also, he, Dan, very influential on what he's, all these links, uh, what a pain in the ass, but all the links will be in the description, guys. So feel free to check everybody out. This guy has a great argument on why to pick Kunitskaya. He almost, I think he almost flipped Clint's pick mid-show. <laughs> but anyway, definitely check that. Clint did not flip his pick. He stayed with Irene Aldana. But uh, check that out. Dan is saying, he brought up the point that uh, Irene Aldana has been outstruck like by several opponents. That's her hole in her game. And that's where you, Yana Kunitskaya is like, uh, that's her strength. Is her volume of punches. Look at Ketlin Vieira fight, you know? Anyway. Um, Dan's taking him. Then we've got, uh, and Clint over here. So then we've got, um, what's going on? Bleed MMA. Bleed taking the Russian, Yana. Then we've got, uh, where the hell am I? Oh, James Lynch. James Lynch is taking Irene Aldana. By decision. Okay, and the rest of the guys, there's only um, three left, and they're all on Aldana. We've got uh, the two gentlemen from Harley Punch. That's Matt and Josh. Both are saying by decision for Aldana, the Mexican. Uh, when I get a tan, I look mucho Mexican. Think I got no problemos, better guess again. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's uh, Mises. Dev the dude, you're from Missouri, you know about Mises? Anyway, sorry to jump off topic there. Um, Harley Punch by decision. Then finally, we've got my brother from another mother, <laughs> UFC 
celebrities and classics. His his pick is fight goes the distance. But he says, since Capra says I take a side, I guess I take Aldana, Irene Aldana. So he's I force him to pick a side. He's not confident in it by no means, but he is on the board with Irene Aldana. I just spoke with him. He's he's covering the England versus Denmark Euros game, soccer game right now. I jumped in right before making this and I was like, hey bro. But uh, he's got a video, link will be in the description. I don't know if it's going the link will be for this one or this one. He does his fights. Every fight is a separate video. Early prediction, like does them like a month early. But anyway, um, fight goes the distance. So I guess he's taking all down a by decision. So there you have it. The majority of the cappers are leaning with the favorite, Irene Aldana. She does have that uh, three inch height advantage, but man, I cannot go again. I'm telling you what my changing factor, I was, I was all about the Mexican, all about her until I listened to Dan Best Fight Odds on Pub Sports Radio. Be sure to check that out. Definitely link will be in the description. And that's what convinced me to flip my pick. And I'm now taking Yana Kunitskaya. I'm gonna, you know, why not, why not ride with it? I picked her before against Cutlin Vera and I won. So, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I guess, so I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with Yana again. Foxy, Yana Kunitskaya. Diego Santos is a very lucky man because she is a Foxy woman. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna take her, of course, female fight. We gotta take by decision. If it does end, I think it's gonna end by the hands of Irene Aldana, but I'm not gonna hedge. I'm not gonna, I'm sticking strong with my pick. I gotta change it in tap biology as I've already made my picks in tap. I already put in a full, like four different parlays. On a, I did, a, I did you know, the full card parlay and I have it with Irene Aldana, but now I'm gonna to have to make another full card parlay and flip flop that. By the end of the week, dude, especially if there's two weeks in between the, you know, events, I end up making like, I don't know, be half a dozen different full card parlays because I flip flop my picks. You know, and every time I flip flop, I'm like, damn, I gotta make another $1 play. Uh, it's just a lotto ticket parlay. And if, I think the one with her in it, uh, oh, definitely, now it's gonna be more money for the Kunitskaya, she's a positive. But I think $1, when it was Irene Aldana, with everybody I picked on the card, pays $1, pays out like 890 or some, some ridiculous number. But you gotta get every fight right, which is, that's why I keep doing all these, I'm looking for that perfect parlay, guys, that perfect parlay, I don't do it like a perfect parlay pursuit, they do $10 perfect parlay pick, I, I'll, I'll admit after, after the weigh-ins, when I firm up my whole lineup, like every, the morning, Saturday morning, I do do a, like a, I don't go $10, I do $5, $5 perfect parlay, like full card parlay, all, all whatever. I think the limit is like 12 fights on Bet Online. I think you can't go over 12 fights, so I eliminate some of the ones that I'm on the fence with. But anyway, I'm now on board with the Yana Kunitskaya, Foxy Yana Kunitskaya, by decision. Moving on to the big boys, the only heavyweight fight on the card. We've got Bam Bam, Tai Tuivasa, taking on the Prince of War, Greg Hardy. I got it. Hold on, one moment. <sighs> okay. Tai Tuivasa is the favorite here at minus 130. Uh, Greg Hardy, the underdog at plus 110. So let's first discuss the favorite, Tai Tuivasa. He's got a record of 12 and three. Bam Bam is coming off a win against Harry Hunsucker, ground and pound in round one. I think Harry Hunsucker was a short notice fight. Uh, for Harry Hunsucker, uh, I forget Tai Tuivasa was supposed to fight somebody else, I think, and fell through. But Harry Hunsucker came in and 
got pounced on. But anyway, um, he fights out of, uh, he used to fight out of Lions High Performance Center in Sydney, Australia, but now, I don't know. I've heard he was fighting out of uh, American Kickboxing Academy with Daniel Cormier, like uh, training with him. But then I heard he has since left that, left that uh, AKA and so I don't know where he's the guy's training. This is this is from what I've soaked in from the cappers and taken notes. But uh, you gotta imagine Daniel Cormier. He's got hopefully he's been working on his wrestling because neither one of these guys can wrestle. They're both horrible on the ground. There's, there's gonna be stand up brawl, strike it out like a bar fight against two big heavyweights. All right, um, Tai Tuivasa is uh, a shoey, means he, he drinks beer out of boots and shoes of strangers, which is, I think it's kind of gross. I, you aren't, you're not gonna catch me doing that shit, but uh, I'm not even my own boot. Why would you do that? You gotta stick your foot into a wet boot or a wet sneaker or a wet shoe. And then there's strange people, you got strangers, you got athletes foot and they got like, Foot fungus and shit. That's just nasty. Here is, you know, it's gross. Ty Tuivasa, let me go work a day in the field and then come back, come and drink a drink a beer out of my boot. I mean, even Das Boot is a glass shaped as a boot. It's not a real boot, Ty Tuivasa. It's not a, you know. Anyway, whatever. The guy from uh, Pub Sports Radio too does the. Does it too? It's, it's gross. Why would you do that? Anyway, what's his name? Boston Nick. Or I think Boston Nick from Pub Sports Radio also. He wants to take on Tai Tuivasa in a shoey contest. Like uh, who can drink more beers out of strange people's footwear? I. Hey, whatever turns you on, right? Anyway, uh, Greg Hardy. If you didn't know, he used to play for the Dallas Cowboys. He was a professional football player. If you don't know that by now, I don't know where you've been hiding. Him. I mean, whatever. Uh, he's coming off a loss to Marcin Tybura, who is a beast. Ground and pound, second round. You know why? Because he took him down, and I told you, Greg Hardy doesn't know what to do when he's on the ground. He looked like a turtle, a flopping fish. He's just. He can't fight off his back. He can't do shit on the ground, which is kind of crazy because he's fighting his, he's training at American Top Team, the most prominent training facility, arguably, the most prominent training facility in the land against the top tier fighters. But you, hopefully he's been working on his ground game because he that's where his hole is. That's where he is the weakest, it's on the ground. but. Not to fear, I don't think Tai Tuivasa is very strong down there either. But um, Greg Hardy does have the three inch height and four and a half inch reach advantage. Boy, this is gonna be the battle of Goliaths. Both these guys are big old boys. And arguable, the, there's a big argument on the cardio because they got the short burst football player cardio. Like these guys, Every play is a short burst of energy. Then you, during the, um, you know, the huddle in between plays, unless it's, uh, you know, unless you're no huddle, no huddle offense, whatever. He's a defensive player, by the way. But no huddle offense, you have to be boom, boom, in there. But I'm saying there's a chances to catch your breath pretty much every less than a, a minute. I mean, a play does never goes like, barely ever goes up like a full minute. So you get your burst of energy, catch your breath, get ready for your next play. Whereas in Tai Tuivasa has got the experience, 12 and three. I think he's only been to decision maybe one time or some in his uh, wins. I think all the rest, I, I can't verify that though. But I heard some stat like that from one of these guys that Tai Tuivasa has been there once. Greg Hardy's been there too, though. So I don't know who's got the better cardio. We got the whole thing with the uh, inhaler too. Greg Hardy had the no contest with the inhaler, but I don't take that for what you will. I, I mean, so 
I'm going to have to go by what these cappers have to say and uh, let's throw it up there. This is a very, very close. Oh man. On my paper, it looks like a tie, but I'm going to have to count the actual cappers because, you know, some of them are threes. That's three people there. This is two people here. This is two people here. We'll count it after I write them all down. I'm going to go back and forth, starting with the favorite. Take in Tai Tuivasa. We've got <clears throat> both the boys from Pub Sports Radio, Clint and Dan, both taking Tai Tuivasa. They didn't say method, <clears throat> but they did. All right, both are taking Tuivasa here. Then we've got uh, UFC celebrities and classics, Vlad. He thinks the fight does not go the distance. That's easy. Um, oh, it does not go the distance. It's actually money plus money plus 160 for the... Oh, I'm sorry. That's one and a half rounds. He's, he's talking about the two and a half. The distance. Now, he didn't say no under one and a half. He said fight does not go the distance. So, he's saying under two and a half. He didn't say if it's under one and a half. But anyway, uh, we're just gonna say under, all right? Not necessarily under the one and a half though. Does not go the distance. That's what I'll put. Fight does not go the distance, okay? Uh, that's what I was messing. Um, my family here? Uh, I got the landscaper out there mowing too, so he, he should be knocking on the door any minute, waiting for his money. Anyway, Greg Hardy, um, or I'm sorry, also take in Tai Tuivasa. We've got both guys from Parlay Punch, Matt and Josh, Matt, Josh, both saying by KO. So there's two more people. Taking to Ivasa. Then we've got what's going on? Bleed MMA. Very influential on on uh, his watch his shit because that's I was flip flops back and forth too. But until I watch Bleed, <laughs> well now I'm pretty much giving away my pick. But anyway, I'll still go through with this. Dev the dude is taking. Tuivasa by decision. Um, MMA prediction guru taking Greg Hardy by decision. Thinks he's a better athlete overall coming from NFL. Um, both brothers from Fight Night Picks, Matt and Craig. There's two more. See what I mean? Taken to Ivasa. Then we got Brady, DFS by the numbers. He's saying Greg Hardy should win the decision. Look at all these guys saying decision. That's kind of crazy. Ronnie, Ronnie's MMA breakdowns. He's taking the Shuey TKO early, round one or two. I'm just going to write TKO. Okay, uh, James Lynch taking the Prince of War. By KO. Full disclosure, James Lynch does not claim to be a predictor or handicapper. He is an interviewer. So the, don't take anything to... He's not responsible. Don't bitch at him if he picks it wrong. He's just, you know, disclaimer. Okay, we've got the British guru. He's saying Tai Tuivasa knockout in the first round. He thinks Greg Hardy is overrated. It's your boy, Ebay's taking Greg Hardy by decision. Does not like him, but is going to take him. Anyway, um, Tiger Bomb, Johnny is taking Tai Tuivasa, but Jose is staying away. So I'm just kidding. That's just one. You'd think it was two, but no. Jose is not going to put his reputation online. He's staying away from this fight. Oh, my bad. My bad. 
He is taken Tai Tuivasa, but he's still staying away in the betting sense. But Jose, if he, I think he said something like, I have to take a side fight. I'm going to lean Tuivasa. His counterpart is taking Greg Hardy. Johnny's taking Greg Hardy by decision. Johnny by decision. Then we've got um, Burt MMA picks taking Tai Tuivasa by decision. Then uh, Leighton UFC gambling addicts Leighton taking Greg Hardy in this hard, hard. This is a coin flip fight. Uh, perfect parlay pursuit. They are not triple P certified here. Alex is the only one taking Tai Tuivasa. Luke and Dan are on Greg Hardy. So that's two of the three guys taking uh, Prince of War. Then we've got, um, finally, SEUFC predictors or predictions. He's saying KO in the second round for Tai Tuivasa. And the MMA fortune teller, the teller, the teller, is taking Greg Hardy because he's biased to American Top Team because he lives right down the road from the facility in Coconut Creek. So, let's count these up. We've got... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen kick and tie to Ivasa. Uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Whoo! Tied to Ivasa comes out as the capper majority winner by two cappers. To beat uh, Greg Prince of War Hardy, but as I said, I was I was on the on I was on the fence for a long time. I flip flopped. I even like I did. I already put in a couple parlays with Tai Tuivasa. However, after watching what's going on, my boy Bleed, and some of the things he was saying, I uh, I'm flipping my pick and I'm taking. Greg Hardy to outlast, and uh, the thing is, stand up. There, some people are saying Tai Tuivasa's, but plus money. They're both horrible on the ground, from what I've what I've heard from these cappers. It's going to be a stand up brawl. Take the more physical guy. Even explosive football energy should overcome. The Australian, I don't know. I don't, this is a tough fight, but I'm taking American top teams, Greg Hardy. And I think he's gonna get it done by knockout. I'm not calling the round because he's already a plus number. If you plus number that with KO, TKO, take Hardy. If on tapology, I will say round two, okay? KO in the second. That's my tapology pick for you guys there. So to recap, time check. I don't have a watch anymore. <laughs> I've got Foxy Yana Kunitskaya beating Irene Aldana Robles by decision for the upset and the plus money. Plus money junkie, man. When in doubt, dog or pass, take the dog. You want to make get value on that bet. Same here. Plus money. I'm taking Greg Hardy to knock out the beer drinking from boots of strangers. Boots and shoes and sneakers of strangers. Weird. <laughs> I got him knocking him out in the second round. First or second round. I'm just going to put KO. Two on Capology. But I'm going to parlay these two people for my show parlay right after I'm done filming this. So there you have it. 
Um, gather the info, place those bets and cash those tickets. I appreciate you watching. Give me that thumbs up. Leave comments down below on who you think are going to win these two very close coin flip fights. Both of them could go either way. Like I said, I was flop I flopped on both of them. I was Irene Aldana, Tai Tuivasa. That was my first. I told you, there's three modules. First mod is when you look at the whole fight card and you're just picking before you do any research. I like him, I like her, I like him, I like her. You do that through the whole card, module one. Then module two is after you've been doing some research, soaking in the info, gathering the knowledge, some watching fights, watching capper videos, all the stuff, that's module two, that's here. Module three is after you watch the weigh-ins and the face-off to see if anybody's looking like they had a bad weight cut or if they're sucking weight or if there's any sort of intimidation, a quiver, anything like that in the face-offs. You take that as your module three. After the face-offs, you make your final pick and that's the one I'm going with. But for right now, I'm taking the underdogs on both these fights. Uh, by the way, by the way, thank you BC Dave, because Dave, and because Dave, I am now a part of the MMA Holes family. I will also put a link to their channel in my description for this video. Um, I don't, Dave did all the work, footwork for me and I appreciate him for that, because Dave. And I do enjoy MMA Holes, and I, I would watch their stuff live, but I gotta watch it with Vlad, who's also part of the MMA Holes family. That's why I said he's my brother from another mother. We're both part of that MMA Holes family. Let's make the community greater and bigger, the MMA Holes community. Thank you. Uh, so uh, good luck on these bets, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the coverage of the main and co-main events. It's going to be a good one. So uh, good luck, and see you next episode.